How you doing, Vinny the Axe here? So we're on part three of the Warmoth build, or I should say part three of the update of the Warmoth build. It's been built and it's been changed so many times, um, I figured I'd give you an update on what's going on. So initially when I built the Warmoth, um, I kind of made it like a super strat. I had like a humbucker in the bridge, a single coil in the neck. Wasn't really too happy with the way... The quarter pound sounded in the neck with the 59 in the bridge. Um, not that any of them sounded bad, they just sounded too similar. Even when I switched into the neck pickup, they almost had the same characteristics. It was like really weird. Um, I mean, you definitely could tell one's a single coil, one's a humbucker, but the EQing was almost identical. It was almost like a waste of time to switch, switch pickups when you're playing. So I decided that the mix wasn't right with those two. So then I changed the pick guard and the setup. And then I put a 59 only in the bridge with one volume pot, um, all like 80s style. Uh, it sounded cool. It was all right. Um, and then I still wasn't happy with it for whatever reason. And then I changed it to a EVH uh, Wolfgang pickup, which really sounded killer in, in the guitar. But then I wasn't vibing the bridge. Uh, I wasn't liking the fact that the bridge, when you change the strings or you want to clean the fretboard or whatever, the bridge can fall in on itself. I told that I told you about that in the, the last video. I brought that up, and uh, it stays in tune. It's great. It just I uh, I don't I don't know something about it. Just I don't think it was for this guitar. I mean I know it's made for you know for this style of guitar. I just something about it. I just wasn't digging it. So I happened to be watching a a, a show one night on YouTube. Um, I forget which channel it was that I follow, but they were they had a bunch of Fender Custom Shop Master Built relics on there, and those are the heavy relics. So those are the ones that are like really beat up. They look like they got dragged down the block and ran over and set on fire and shot three times. And uh, I think if you recall, if you watched video one or video two, I talked about my I had full intentions of this being a relic job from the beginning. And I said that you know after I painted it, there was no anomalies in the paint, and the paint came out perfect. I didn't want to. I didn't want to mess it up. I really was not wanting to mess it up, especially because the paint cost me three hundred bucks. So you know the whole paint kit and the finishing kit for the neck and everything, and kind of felt like a bit sacrilegious to kind of destroy the guitar after I painted it. But I was watching uh, some of these. Custom Shop Master Builds, Heavy Relics. I, I've owned several Fender Custom Shops Relic, but I, you know, Heavy Relic I never had. And some people just don't get the whole Relic thing, and, and I understand. I mean, um, in one of my videos I talked about, like, I think I brought it up. Uh, not one of the Warm Moth ones, but talked about, like, if you're OCD and you don't like having your guitar scratched, when you buy a Relic, it takes that whole thing out of your head because it's already, it's already done. So even if you scratch it, it doesn't mess you up, you know, mentally. So... I, I kind of like it for that, um, um, that whole th that whole process in in my skull anyway. Um, so I was watching it and I talked to my wife and I'm like, hey, I was like, check out these you know these uh, custom shop uh, master built relics, heavy relics, and I said that's what I wanted to do with you know with my build. That's that's what my intention was. So my wife, you know, is super cool. She's just like, well, so do it. I mean, that's what you wanted to do. That was your plan. So do it. And I'm like, all right. I guess I just needed that that push over the edge so i brought the guitar in, um, into the garage into my little workshop area and um i had a plan i went online first i just didn't just walk in there and start beating the hell out of it i uh i went online and looked at a bunch of photographs of um heavy relic guitars you know namely stratocasters and kind of got an idea of how i wanted it to look or i picked out what i thought was cool uh relic wise heavy relic wise and then i just kind of kind of copied the idea and then um, I started working on the guitar so I used um, all different types of uh, tools and um, sandpaper and you name it um, exacto knife especially and I started working on the guitar a little at a time chipping away at it and doing my thing and um, all the exposed wood parts I actually went back and uh, stained and then uh, Renaissance waxed over them, uh, so you know, so it, it looked decent. Um, took me a while, and then uh, so here's so I'll give you an idea of how that all came out. So I kind of did like the little scratch marks that you would do when you carelessly pull the strings out or pull them in, put them in, or um, you know when you uh, 
when you're adjusting the intonation of the guitar and the screwdriver slips off, that kind of thing, you know, there's really no real reason. I mean, this is this is what it looks like when you beat the hell out of your guitar is really what, what this looks like. But I kind of like the, uh, the idea of it. So um, so that was the first thing. I, I, um, I relicked it back. I saw a, cu a, ma a custom shop with had actually more paint removed than this, and I liked the way it looked, but I didn't want to take I didn't want to take all the paint off because then I figured that's why the hell did I paint it in the first place. So I was able to maintain the gloss on the on the paint without messing it up, and uh, I think it came out pretty good. So from there, <laughs> I didn't like the black pick guard with it, so I changed that. And then I decided to change the pickups. I'm like, you know what? Let me put in stra strap pickups and get the whole... Because it, it lost its whole 80s super strap vibe. Um, uh, so I put Fender Custom Shop Fat 60s in here. And uh, they sound fantastic. They sound really, really good. And then I had this um, anodized gold guard. And what I did was, is if you noticed, I kind of put some wear into it around the edges. And then I put some wear into it where... You would, I guess, wear it if you played it for 7,000 years and just to make all the paint fall off. Uh, so once I did that, then I wasn't digging the bridge. I'm like, man, it's got a vintage vibe. It sounds really good. You know, plays fantastic. And then I'm like, well, this bridge doesn't really kind of go with the vibe. So I bought a six-screw vintage-style Goto uh, bridge with the full steel block. And um, then I decked it. I mean, I can get it floating. My custom shop was floating. You can get these six screws floating. You just got to kind of, you know, play games with it a little bit and get it dialed in. But for this, I was like, you know what the hell with that? I'll just deck it to the ground, um, to the to the top, and then I'll just put the five springs in and just be done and just be done with it. So, um, so I did that. So then, once that was all done, I wasn't digging the locking tuners because I'm like, well, you know, it's got a vintage style bridge. It looks like a vintage relic. It's got custom shop fat 60s in it, you know, like a regular Strat. And then I'm like, the locking tuners just don't go. So I took the locking tuners out. I bought Fender Vintage USA Vintage Tuners. And I put those in. And they have bushings that have to be press fit. So I actually reamed them out properly, press fit the bushings in, and then put the tuners in. It actually came out really, really good. No problems. Took my time. Um, had some patience about it. And, uh, and got that done. Then what needed to happen was, is because the locking tuners were staggered, which means from the, um, well, uh, this is reverse headstock, but as the, as the tuners go away from the nut, they stagger down lower in height, so you don't need a string tree. But I still, I didn't like the, um, because it's reverse headstock, I didn't like the low E uh, running all that distance. It didn't have the right break angle, I didn't think. Um, and maybe that was why the guitar wasn't, I'm not saying it wasn't behaving properly, but if you don't have that right angle over the nut, it just something about it just doesn't play right. So, um, so I went and got a string tree, and man, I got that right in the right spot that needed to be. The break angle's perfect. It almost mimics the other strings, which uh, took a little bit for me to figure out how I was gonna um, to get it in the right spot. In other words, where it looked good, and the other thing was is the break angle was correct. So, um, if you notice the actions pretty low in this guitar and um, it plays absolutely fantastic. Here's the uh, truss rod adjust on the side. That's the uh, modern uh, warm moth feature. I did a little sanding on the back to smooth out, just satin, satinized it to take the um, the gloss that I had sprayed on the whole thing just off the back so that it's a little bit smoother um, to play. The guitar sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, it Matter of fact, it sounds so good that um, I think it's kind of on par with my uh, my Fender Custom Shop guitar. And so I put it up for sale, so I'm gonna sell my, my Custom Shop, which is which is fine. I'm trying not to do a whole redundant thing. So and not have like, you know, two tellies, two strats, two whatever, you know, I'm trying to keep like to one single cut, one telly, one strat, you know, and that kind of thing. So um, I got some videos coming up because I got some new guitars in, and so those videos should be coming out shortly. Um, and I'll go over some of those, uh, but as of right now, I think this project is done. I think it's, it's, uh, it's finished. Now, funny enough, um, side note with the pickups, the fat sixties, I've had the fat sixties in a couple of other guitars and I did not like them. I didn't even like the way the bridge sounded. It sounded too bright and shrill or whatever. And I just happened to be watching a episode with Rabir. Uh, I think it, 
oh, was it Andertons or the guys from, no, it was the guys from that pedal show. If you follow that channel, it's an awesome channel. Anyway, they were talking about how the pickups sound a little bit different with an anodized pickguard. And you can believe what you want, witchcraft or not, but I can I can definitely hear the difference when they when they swapped them out. So I said, let me give this anodized pickguard a try. And I'll tell you what, man, I there is no there is something to it because the bridge pickup on this doesn't sound trebly and shrill anymore, uh, with the tone disengaged. You know what I mean? And and it sounds uh, it sounds awesome. So I don't know, man. Maybe it just likes this guitar. Could be this body is Karina, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know, but. At any rate, these pickups sound fantastic. Um, I have um, a low friction uh, pot, a uh, volume pot, and um, regular friction uh, tone and uh, double tones. Um, I have a um, an OG uh, five way switch, and when I added to this, and what else did I do? And it's got all the uh, the cloth vintage fifties era style uh, wire wire in here that I wired in. Uh, with the exception of the wires that come off the pickups, of course, I didn't mess with those. And so, um, yeah, the guitar sounds absolutely fantastic. I don't think I'm going to change it from here out. I think it's okay. Um, also, oh, let me show you the, the fake cigarette burn mark I put there in the in the headstock. And then I put some little little dings and marks and kind of dirtied it up a bit. I don't want to damage it too much. but uh, But anyway, yeah, the thing came out really good. I'm really, really thrilled with it. Sounds fantastic. You know, um, all in all, I, I don't really know how much I got into this because I bought so many parts and then I decided not to use them, which is just a nightmare um, to get to this. But you know what? The journey was worth it. I would say, I would say that I, I would say that it just sounds good as good as what any of the custom shop strats that I used to own or own. Um, you know, uh, if you spend the money and you do it correctly, I dress the frets, I cut the nut, you know what I mean? And I did I did a fairly good job. I'm actually proud of myself. Um, this is not my first build, per se, but it's the first build where I had to do painting and everything. And in my last video, I told you I'm not going to do that again. I don't think I'm going to paint again. I'm not going to do that again. I just don't think it's cost effective. I mean, in the end, yeah, the guitar resonates really good because it doesn't have a lot of stuff on it, a lot of paint on it. But I don't think I would do it again. I, I don't think so, especially because the paint costs so much. Uh, but I would, like I said, uh, Fender custom shops are going like four, five thousand dollars now today with the with inflation and everything. And uh, this, you can probably buy all this stuff. For, I would say eh, the zone of fifteen hundred, maybe ish, depending if you get deals on a body and a neck, and it's something you, the, you know, specs you want. Um, I mean, you can go up from there, of course. But uh, but yeah, you can get yourself, you know, a guitar that plays like a three thousand, four thousand dollar guitar, you know, for very minimal minimal um, amount of uh, coin so um very pleased with it um and if you have any questions or any comments you know throw them down in the uh in the little comment field thing and uh, i appreciate you watching and um thanks for listening to this all the way through and <laughs> listen to the rant and and uh, checking out the guitar and um and checking out the channel anyway have a great weekend take it easy